What's in a bite? Well, we've all been bitten by bugs and most of us live through it. But what's in a bug bite? Well, first of all, malaria. I am told that the most dangerous animal in the world is the mosquito. More people are killed by mosquito bites by 10 to 1 than any other large dangerous animal that we may think about, like lions or tigers or elephants, whatever it may be. The mosquito is the most dangerous of all animals. Now malaria is caused by the Anopheles mosquito. The Anopheles mosquito can be identified by the fact that it stands on its head when it bites you. Other mosquitoes bite you with their body parallel to your skin. The Anopheles mosquito goes up on its head when it bites you. So you can always tell that it's an Anopheles mosquito, but guess what? By the time you've looked down at your wrist and said, oh, that's an Anopheles mosquito that's biting me, it's already too late. You have potentially malaria. So it's important that you take prophylaxis for malaria. We recommend that you take uh, some medication on a regular basis during the time that you're in the country, and this is very important for at least four weeks after you leave the country for most prophylactic therapy. Uh, I will not recommend a prophylactic therapy specifically. I personally use doxycycline, but I recommend that you see your family doctor or your uh, regular health care provider and get a prescription for whatever they recommend for your specific circumstance. Malaria prophylaxis is very important, and it is important that you continue to take your prophylaxis to the end of the prescription. Otherwise, you may have a mild case of malaria. You uh, put it under wraps with the antibiotics, and then later on, you come up with the infection, and by now you say, oh, surely it's been so long since I've been to that country. No one remembers that they've been exposed to malaria. So you need to finish your prescription out completely. Anytime you've been to a foreign country and you return with a febrile or flu-like illness, particularly if the fever is associated with diarrhea and a grumbling inside of your abdomen. You need to think malaria. You need to get tested for malaria. Doctors in the United States will not think of malaria unless you tell them that you've been in a foreign country and that you may have been exposed to malaria. So it's very important that you give that information to your doctor. Well, yellow fever is a mosquito-borne disease. You need to have a yellow fever immunization. Now, it's important that you realize not many countries have an active yellow fever problem, but if you do not have a yellow fever immunization, if you do not have that little card carrying with your passport that says you've had a yellow fever shot, if you happen to be in a country when they declare a yellow fever epidemic to be going on in that country, then you will not be allowed to return to the United States without getting a vaccine you may end up spending two weeks at your first port of entry in quarantine because you didn't have a vaccine. So you need to make sure that you get a yellow fever vaccination before you go to a third world country. Now next on the list is dengue fever. Dengue fever is sort of dear to my heart because I've had it and it's a terrible illness, the sickest I ever was in my life. Dengue fever is caused by a different mosquito, Aedes aegypti. Aedes aegypti is a little mosquito that has zebra striped legs. Once again, I don't really look when I get a mosquito on me. I just swat that sucker and let it go. But uh, the Aedes aegypti mosquito has zebra-striped legs, and it bites you during the daytime. Uh, specifically, this is the mosquito that will bite you at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when you're taking a nap. A lot of times, mosquitoes bother you the most at night, so you keep on your mosquito repellent in the evening and during the night but you're not really bothered by mosquitoes during the day because you're working or you're busy or whatever it may be. But the Aedes aegypti mosquito will bite you about three o'clock in the afternoon. It's important that you keep your insect repellent on all day long as well as at night. Chagas disease. Chagas disease is a disease that's caused by a reduvid beetle. The reduvid beetle is also called the kissing bug. And what this thing does is it crawls in at night while you're asleep and it crawls up on your face, amazingly, because it's a great big bug, it can crawl right across your face without waking you up and it bites you on the corner of the lip or in the corner of the eye. And then after it bites you, it defecates and rubs that into the bite and you develop a little sore at the 
the spot where the mite bit you, right at the site of the bite of the mite, you might say, you develop a little sore called a shigoma, which ultimately transforms into a systemic illness that causes heart problems later on. Chagas disease is fairly common in third world countries. So you need to be careful how you sleep. You need to make sure you sleep in a place that is safe to sleep in and inside of a mosquito net. Leishmania. There are a number of types of leishmaniasis. There's the simple cutaneous leishmaniasis, which uh, the army has termed Baghdad boil because a lot of people got that in Asia. And it's simply a skin infection that will not heal. It occurs from the bite of a sand flea, which is a little gnat-like creature that bites you, especially when you go in tall grass or near water. The Baghdad boil is not really serious. There are a number of treatments for it, and it'll go away spontaneously in a couple of years, even if you don't treat it. However, the bad thing is Kala Azar. And Kala Azar is systemic leishmaniasis. And this is available in uh, many areas of Central and South America, and Kala Azar can be fatal. If you see the picture of the man in this slide, we encountered this gentleman on a mission trip, and you see his nose. I don't know how many of you would like to have a nose that looks like that, but this gentleman had Kala Azar. He's actually very lucky. He's one of the survivors. Most people who have this disease die. Uh, he has survived, and he survived with this facial deformity. Onchocerciasis. This is a disease caused by a sand flea, and the sand flea introduces a filarial organism that produces these skin changes. This can be very severe, it can be highly pruritic, and uh, it can be treated, but the treatment is not readily available here in the United States. Elephantiasis. This gentleman here has a terrible case of elephantiasis, and this is not a poor man who lives in the bush. This is a businessman, but during his growing up years, he got enough bites by the sand fleas that the filarial organisms are living in his blood. They blocked his lymphatics, and now he has this huge, swollen, ulcerated foot, and it's really just a mess. He came to us at a clinic and said, what should I do with this? Well, we cleaned it up, gave him some antibiotics for the infection that was in it, but I recommended that he have a below-the-knee amputation. That's probably the only solution for his problem, and he's still a young man yet. You get elephantiasis from being bitten, by the sand fleas down along the river. Uh, there is a treatment for it, uh, but once you've developed elephantiasis, even if you kill the filaria, the elephantiasis persists. So the treatment is not effective once you've developed the disease. For prevention, there is a salt called DEC salt that has a, a treatment in it that kills the filarial organism in its young stages. And personally, when I go to a country that has filaria, I buy a pack of DEC salt and take it home and eat it for a while. But the point is, use your insect repellent and stay away from the sand flies. So what do you do? Well, first of all, bug spray. You should keep some insecticide on your body at all times. DEET is the best, uh, somewhere around 40 to 50 percent. The higher the percentage, the longer it lasts on your body. If you use a low percentage, you're going to have to reapply it several times. Uh, I personally use 100% because it travels well, but you have to realize you have to spread that stuff pretty thin uh, or you're going to get too much. Use a mosquito net. We recommend that everyone sleep under a mosquito net. Uh, we buy them commercially from longroad.com. There are many other sources, but you should not sleep in a third world country without a mosquito net. Besides keeping off mosquitoes and the reduvid bugs and the sand flies, it also keeps off vampire bats in many places. So it's important that you wear a mosquito net. Get all the immunizations that we've talked about, and don't forget to take your prophylaxis for malaria.